Today I want to share a few signs that will let you know if you are a possible target for cult indoctrination. See, cults seek out certain individuals. It's like a lion on the Serengeti and they see a pack of gazelles, right? And they're drinking water from the pool. And so the lion first initially, they scope it out and who does the lion go after? It goes after the gazelle that's the slowest or the gazelle that's injured. And they snag that one out of the pack because the predator is looking for the path of least resistance. They want the easiest, fastest prey. They don't want prey that is going to be the, going to fight them tooth and nail. So a healthy, critically thinking person is not the type of person that they are going to go after. They are predators and even good meaning people who are doing the bidding on behalf of the cult, which I used to be one of them, had good intentions for what it was worth, but still it's predatory. So here are a few things that um, you should look out for in yourself to protect you. Um, because if you recognize your weaknesses and your vulnerabilities, you won't be as susceptible to being sucked into one of these cults, be it the International Church of Christ, be it Scientology, be it Jehovah's Witnesses, be it the United States military, be it um, Amway or some multi-level marketing scheme. So let's continue. First thing that makes you vulnerable is if you're going through a major life transition. Transitions are always a vulnerable time in our lives. And a lot of times we have a need for some sort of spiritual comfort. We need grounding when things are topsy-turvy. And a lot of times um, religion, some belief system, or some group that is love bombing us. See my video on love bombing. But, in, you know, when they're showing us love and, and showering us with affection and you know, and, and suppose it care, it can feel really intoxicating when we're going through a major transition in our lives. Let me give an example of a few transitions that you may be going through in the lookout for. Um, one transition is if you have moved to a new place. A lot of the converts into the cult I was in came from when people who were moving to a new city or town or state or even country. You know, you're in a very vulnerable place. A lot of times you don't know people where you're moving. You don't have relationships. You don't have community organizations you're a part of. So you're completely open if some smiling person invites you to a church service or a Bible study. You know, you just want to be a part of something. You know, as human beings, we're social creatures. So uh, when you're, if you're in a new city or town or state or country, be very aware of this because that's how you get got a lot of times. You're looking for friends. You're looking for people to hang out with. You're looking for community organizations to be a part of and you can you're totally vulnerable so you have to keep that in mind when some shiny happy person hands you a track or a flyer for some event um, to come to because you know you just want friends but you have to vet these people you have to proceed with caution another transition um, is when I was in personally, this is how I got got. I was a freshman in college who had moved away from home for the first time. Major, major thing for college students 
um, I think the major percentage of cult indoctrin indoctrinations take place on college campuses. Um, I'm a perfect example of that. And uh, these campus ministries really prey on students who are away from home, they're away from their family, they're away from their friends, and they're in this entirely new place. Um, and in terms of their life, they're transitioning from a college student, a teenager, to a college student who is heading toward adulthood and has to make adult decisions. And there is a lot that is taking place as a new college student that you're just you're just not used to, and you're not um, you're just so vulnerable being away from your family, and you're looking for friends. Again, we're social creatures. We're looking for a like I was looking for a church um, to go to, you know, that was in the local area. So that makes you completely open to getting sucked into one of these groups. Another thing people get sucked into freshman year was sororities. I almost got sucked into one of those too, but I ended up getting into the other cult with the church. So it was something that is something that you have to be aware of when you are a college freshman. If you have a sibling or a cousin or someone you love that's going away to school, please warn them about cults because they are going to be approached by these happy-go-lucky Bible-thumping groups. They're going to be invited by somebody to some event where there's chips and soda and pizza to suck them in and make them comfortable because they want to belong to something. Um, and that's huge in college and you're still in your formative years. So you have to be very, very cautious. You can go to an event or to some Bible study, but make sure it's in a public place. Make sure that, you know, both eyes are open and, you know, just sit back and observe. Um, don't feel like you have to have friends so badly that you'll compromise. Another major transition is when you have a baby. Having children is a huge, huge transition or a milestone in your life. And a lot of times having children, even if someone's not a churchgoer, you know, they want to belong to something that will morally ground their children. They want their children to be a part of that. Family and church in American culture goes together like, uh, like baseball and hot dogs you know so it's something that um, makes you very vulnerable when you have children because you know you want to belong to wholesome organizations and a lot that's how you get sucked into these churches you know they may try to get you in with their children's program or they'll try to have some event you know, for families, I mean, there's different ways they try to get you, but just be cautious and be protective of your children because the cult not only wants you, they want your children. And if they can indoctrinate your children from, from the jump at, at small infancy, they can have a, a member for life. Um, but that is something that you have to be very cautious of. Then there are other transitions you may be going through. Maybe a divorce. Maybe um, maybe someone you loved died. Uh, something you could be going through bankruptcy. Anything in your life that is a huge change makes you vulnerable to being sucked into one of these groups. They will appeal to your social needs to belong. They will shower you with love and affection and they will, someone will reach out to you like they are a friend and pretend that they care about you. They may be nice people. I was, but you know, when you're in the cult, you have to consider people in those groups an enemy because they are doing the bidding of that cult, whether they're nice or not. 
Um, another thing that makes you susceptible is if you have fear. You know, if you're, you know, if you're in a place in your life where you have fear or depression, that is going to make you extremely vulnerable because again, you, you want to have connection with people. You want to be understood. You want to be loved unconditionally. You want to feel like there's a support network out there. And, you know, overall, you know, you just want to, you just want to be comforted, you know, and they offer, uh, these cults offer that to you at first, you know, they offer this loving God and this loving group of God loving people that will be your spiritual family. So that is very seductive when you are a person who is struggling with depression, which I was, I was a college student and I was struggling with depression. So I have two of these things working against me at the time. And you know, that depression will make you so vulnerable because you won't be able to critically think because you're stuck in your emotions. And anyone that struggles with depression knows how entrenching it is. It's like you're literally in a dark hole and you can't get out. And so you have to protect yourself against these people because they see your weakness and they're preying on it. And what they will sell, try and sell you is that if you join their group, if you believe what they believe, that God will take God or if it's, um, if it's a multi-level marketing or whatever, whatever the thing is, if you become a part of it, it will take away your depression. And they may even try to relate, have someone who also had depression and they'll give you the whole story of, well, I used to be depressed, but now I found God and now I'm no longer depressed, which is what happened to me. So you will you will have to be very cautious with these people and keep them at arm's length. I don't, I know how bad you want to feel better. I know how much you want to be comforted in the pain that you're in, but this is not the answer. And which brings me to the next one. And that is that you feel hopeless. Um, depending on what's going on in your life. I mean, if you're in a space in your life where you're feeling hopeless that things will ever get better, you are a fodder for the cult. You are the gazelle that is limping behind the pack because in, they will zero in on you. They could smell it on you. In hopelessness, in Christian cults, they really prey on your hopelessness and they offer hope to you in believing in their doctrine, in the Bible, in their particular church. They'll tell you that they used to be hopeless and now they're hopeful. They'll tell you that um, every day is the sunshine now that I have a relationship with God and tell you how genuine it is and tell you how great it is. But they are doing this to get you to join. They want you to sign on to believe that this is going to happen to you, that you are going to find direction in your life, that that problem you think will never get better will, that you can't, there is hope for another day, that, you know, that the problem will be solved, you know, and the, and the, the bad thing about this is that that's a complete lie. And I found out after over 10 years later that I finally faced the fact that Jesus was not going to fix the problems in my life and I was the only one that could and certain things you're just going to have to learn to accept about your life you know something you know what is that famous saying um it's a meme it says uh God help me to accept the things I cannot change, to change the things I can. And I can't remember the third part, but 
some things you have to accept. Um, so, which brings me to the next, the next sign that you're vulnerable. If you have a chronic illness, this was me. Um, I had a lot of these signs and you know, it made it pretty obvious that I was a, a target because um, I had a chronic illness, which I still do, you know, hence the term chronic. And somehow this girl was able to sell it to me that God was going to change my illness and my life would totally turn around, which it did not. In fact, I got worse when I was in the church, in the cult. Um, it actually... It actually took me to new lows of my illness um, for various reasons. One is because they run you into the ground trying to serve this group and, and doing all the things to make this group thrive, you know, um, instead of taking care of your health or resting or whatever you needed to do to, to get better or just to not get worse physically. Um, but if you have a chronic illness, um, you know, sometimes people who have cancer, uh, or people who have multiple sclerosis, or they're going through a time where they're having these debilitating symptoms, but they don't know why. And it's just a very scary time, you know, which goes back to the fear I was talking about earlier, where if you're afraid you you naturally search for something that will bring you comfort and when that cult member appears in your life and they hand you that flyer or they give you a phone call or however you you um interface with them and they're trying to they're trying to uh initiate you in um it, you usually accept, you accept the invitation to the Bible study. You accept going to the women's conference event. You accept, you know, going to a church service because you are vulnerable and you're in fear and you need to know there's something bigger than you out there that is going to take that fear away that, you know, that can help. And so the cult and the church has a perfect perfect uh remedy for that you know and they they can promise you that 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 you don't have to fear that god will take care of it um and being part of this group will protect you and so you get sucked in and a chronic illness will do that it's it's something i would not wish on another human being um you know but when you have a chronic illness, you are just so vulnerable. You want to be better and you're trying to find meaning in life and you're struggling to function as a normal human being. And so here comes, you know, the church lady and um, telling you that, oh, well, I used to be sick just like you and God completely changed my life now look, look what I'm doing now. Now I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And, you know, for me, um, that happened to me and that really sucked me in. And that was my weak spot. That was my weak spot. And I didn't know any better at the time. I just knew that maybe that's what I was missing in my life. Maybe I'm suffering because there's a spiritual deficiency and those thoughts will go through your mind. Um, Especially if your, if your software has been Christianity since the day you were born, if that was what you were brought up in, your default programming is Christianity. So you will think maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm in sin or maybe I need to go back to church. This is why I'm having all these problems. So that is why, you know, you have to be very, very aware of where you're at and if you have already gone through this and you're leaving a cult or you're in, in one right now, just know, I mean, it's not an issue of it being your fault. It's just what it is. It's just understanding where you are at in your life. And it's knowing, okay, how can I learn from this so that this doesn't happen in the future? 
because just like um, people who come out of jail have a high rate of recidivism, you know, so does Christian cult survivors because you're very vulnerable when you come out and it's easy to get sucked back into a different group to substitute for the loss of that group in your life. It happened to me, so I, I'm talking from experience. So knowing these vulnerabilities can pr help protect you the next time around. Okay, so I hope that helps. And remember, when you use your religion, you gain so much more.